Hello everyone, I'm Alia Dibu. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be discussing the textbook exercises of NCRT Class 7 Science Textbook, Unit 1 Nutrition in Plants. We're starting with question answers. And the first question is, why do organisms take food? Let's find out. Why do organisms take food? All living organisms need food for many purposes. The important function of food is to help in growth. Food gives energy for the work and for movements. Food is needed for replacement and repairing damaged part of the body. Food helps to resist the diseases and gives protection from illness. Moving on to the second question. Distinguish between a parasite and a saprotroph. Distinguish between a parasite and a saprotroph. Parasite. The organism derives nutrients from another organism without benefiting the host is a parasite. Parasite feeds on a living organism. The organism on which it feeds is called host. Parasite takes ready-made food from the organism on which it feeds. Saprotrophs. The organism which gets nutrients from dead and decaying matter are called saprotrophs. Saprotrophs feed on the dead and decaying organism. They do not feed on living organisms. They secrete digestive juices on the matter they live and convert it into a solution and then absorb it. We're already at the third question. The question is, how would you test the presence of starch in leaves? How would you test the presence of starch in leaves? The presence of starch in leaves can be tested by the iodine test. When we remove chlorophyll from the leaf by boiling it in alcohol and then put two drops of iodine solution to it, then the leaf changes to a blue-black color. This indicates the presence of starch. We're nearly done with question answers. The fourth one is give a brief description of the process of synthesis of food in green plants. Give a brief description of the process of synthesis of food in green plants. The green plants have chlorophyll in their leaves, which trap sunlight, which act as an energy to cook food. The leaves accept carbon dioxide from air, water and minerals from the soil to prepare food in the form of carbohydrates and glucose. It can be represented by the equation on the bottom. We are at the final question of the question answers, the fifth one. Show with the help of a sketch that the plants are the ultimate source of food. Show with the help of a sketch that the plants are the ultimate source of food. From the diagram, we can understand that green plants, with the help of solar energy, are the sole producers or the only producers of food. The green plants are eaten by herbivores and herbivores by carnivores, and then all of them decompose to germinate more plants. From a food chain, we can understand that plants are the ultimate producers and the rest of the organisms are directly or indirectly dependent on it. Alright, next is fill in the blanks. Fill in the blanks. First question. Green plants are called dash since they prepare their own food. Green plants are called autotrophs since they prepare their own food. Number two. The food synthesized by the plants is sorted as The food synthesized by the plants is sorted as starch. Number 3. In photosynthesis, solar energy is absorbed by the pigment called In photosynthesis, solar energy is absorbed by the pigment called chlorophyll. During photosynthesis, plants take in dash and release dash gas. During photosynthesis, plants take in carbon dioxide and release oxygen gas. That was fill in the blanks. We are now at name the following. Name the following. Number 1. A parasitic plant with yellow, slender and branched stem is. A parasitic plant with yellow, slender and branched stem is cascata. Number 2. A plant that is partially autotrophic. 
a plant that is partially autotrophic is pitcher plant. The pores through which the leaves exchange gases. The pores through which the leaves exchange gases are known as stomata. We're halfway there. Let's move on to tick the correct answer. Tick the correct answer. Number one. Cascata is an example of options autotroph, parasite, saprotroph, host. Cascata is an example of parasite. Number two. The plant which traps and feeds on insect is cascata, china rose, pitcher plant, rose. The plant which traps and feeds on insect is pitcher plant. That was tick the correct answer. Alright, we finally made it to one of my personal favorites. Match the following. Match the following. In the first table, column 1 is not correctly matched to column 2. And in the second table, column 1 is correctly matched to column 2 and is the answer of table 1. Next, we have true or false. Mark T if the statement is true and F if the statement is false. Number 1. Carbon dioxide is released during photosynthesis. That's wrong. False. Oxygen is released during photosynthesis. Number 2. Plants which synthesize their food are called saprotroph. Wrong. False. Plants which synthesize their food are called autotrophs. The product of photosynthesis is not protein. That statement is true. Number 4. Solar energy is converted into chemical energy during photosynthesis. That statement is true. That is true or false. We're almost done. Next, we have choose the correct option from the following. Choose the correct option from the following. Which part of the plant takes carbon dioxide from the air for photosynthesis? Root, hair, stomata, leaf, veins, petals. The answer is stomata. Number two. Plants take carbon dioxide from the atmosphere mainly through their roots, stem, flowers, leaves. And the answer is leaves. That was choose the correct option from the following. We are now at the last question. The question is, why do farmers grow many fruits and vegetables in large greenhouses? What are the advantages to the farmers? Why do farmers grow fruits and vegetable crops inside large greenhouses? What are the advantages to the farmers? The greenhouse is a glass building in which plants that need protection from external conditions such as rain, animals and especially cold weather are grown. Farmers have various benefits of growing fruits and vegetable crops in large greenhouses, some of which are the greenhouses provide optimum required for the plants to grow. It protects the plants from birds and animals which might destroy them. It protects the plants from various external factors like fast wind, damage from flowing water, etc. So friends, we are now at the official end of NCRT Class 7 Science Unit 1 Nutrition in Plants. I had a lot of fun during this journey and I hope you guys did too. It really helped me prepare for my 7th standard and I hope you guys found it helpful too. But make sure to stay tuned for the upcoming chapters.